Hello, I'm Nick Poulin, and today we're going to be taking a closer look at a rare and fine Confederate first model Morse carbine. Prior to the Civil War, Louisiana inventor George Morse patented an alteration of obsolete muzzle-loading rifles to more modern breech-loading rifles, as well as a patent for the centerfire cartridge to use in his conversions. Before the start of the Civil War, the Union Army organized machinery to convert the surplus of Model 1841 Mississippi rifles at the Federal Armory in Harper's Ferry, Virginia. When the Confederate Army seized Harper's Ferry at the start of the war in 1861, the machinery was captured and moved to the Richmond Armory. After moving the equipment to multiple armories in Tennessee, Atlanta, Columbia, and finally Greenville, South Carolina, where manufacturing began at the State Military Works in 1864. After recommendation from the Committee of Military of South Carolina House of Representatives to produce 1,000 or more Morse carbines in December of 1862. Morse attempted on multiple occasions to have his rifles adopted by the Confederate Ordnance Department, however ultimately it was rejected due to the difficulty in manufacturing the proprietary cartridge and concerns with the safety latch. This rare and fine Confederate first model Morse carbine is chambered in 50 caliber. It is a very nice example of a complete first model Morse carbine with the solid brass breech door. The majority of the survivors are damaged, missing, or repaired. The brass frame carbine is in its standard configuration with a 39 and a half inch overall length and a 20 inch round barrel with a fixed mounted rear sight, an iron and brass inset front sight, maple stock brass tipped ramrod threaded to extract the brass cleaning jag in the butt. Though 200 of these first models were made in Greenville, South Carolina, they were rarely found in complete original condition. The condition of this rifle rates very good overall with all matching numbers. It has a pleasing medium mustard patina and the stock is sound and solid with an old varnish. The action is mechanically crisp and it has a good rifled bore. Despite being rejected by the Confederate Ordnance Department, the rifles were respected by the parties at Richmond Armory that tested them. They remarked about how these rifles were very good, clean, serviceable guns that were accurate and a pleasure to shoot. If you like this video and want to learn more about Civil War artifacts, then visit our website at PoolinAuctions.com. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe, stay safe, and send it downrange.